in imagining Barbados in its raw state, I want us to then think of the introduction of the British to the island. Now, Barbados was lush and green and else erroneous. Actually, we've had Amerindians here for hundreds of years before, but you know, once Barbados was settled, they were all killed off or enslaved. And made like James Cole, he would have come in 1625 and decided to, you know, name the area after himself, as was the custom for most British settlers at the time. He would have named it Jamestown. They would have landed at some place called the Hole. Then he would have you know, so well behaved, you want to cook the old personality that they were like, we were sitting in. And the entire Caribbean, one of the most like important events in the emancipation movement would have happened right here. Now, actually, taking to where it happened. Oh. The soldiers are up there. This is Sun Saturday night, the 14th of April. And they are standing and they can see that they know and they hear the slaves are revolting. This is a rebellion, revolt, and resilience of a people removed from their homes but not stripped of their identities. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the story of the Busta Rebellion. It's a national hero that not much would be known about, but he's arguably one of the most important, if not the most important, to our national landscape. Bussa, um, you will see a statue of Bussa in Highgate Hall. It's we met at night in secret from February of that year. And on Easter Sunday night, April 14, 1816, all hell broke loose. Close your eyes once more and listen for the sharp cracking of the canes at night time. Imagine the intense heat and the footsteps pounding the ground and war cries filling the still night air with trees and breeze blowing. This heat couldn't have been more, this heat couldn't have been as intense as our desire to set ourselves free. Imagine the glow and after glow as fire spread from field to field all across St. Philip. This entire area was set ablaze by teens. Orange glow signaled to the other rebels in the south all the way in Christ Church. One thing, the rebellion had begun. We took joy in burning the source of our sorrows to the ground for days on end. Burning every plantation in sight, with fire spreading wildly and without control. Freedom was so close that we could more than taste it. Everything was so intense that all the masses had to flee to town, panicking for their life. Finally, we had them. The Europeans, the British, would have used religion as a means of oppression and control. Mm -hmm. And they decided not to teach um, you know, the slaves how to read and the church to them. But they didn't understand that they actually taught them a language that they didn't use to, you know, use against them. So because they used to sing the scriptures to them, the slaves would have not necessarily known how to read, yeah. but they would have been able to communicate messages in code through song that the yeah. masses would have never. Yeah. Exactly. That's what the rebellion started. They were singing to each other through yeah. the fields, and you know, the masses thought it was good for more. Yeah. The slaves, when they saw the black soldiers coming to fight them, in you know, the British um, Royal Army clothes, they were actually known as the Bourbon Blacks, who were actually not supposed to be there. What had happened was, when they came, the slaves were so excited because they saw black men in Royal British um, Army clothes, and their black commander would call them to load up, aim, and fire, and they shot and killed all of them. Mm -hmm. So they actually had to run all the way over from Bailey's Plantation, all the way here. The rebellion actually happened here. I'm going to take you up into the room.